What a lovely day today, everyone. And here is Azinis for you with me, Vanessa. Students from Asian countries talk to Chinese astronauts in space. Students from member states of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations talk to the astronauts working in the Tiangong Space Station of China in pre-arranged program known as ASEAN Students Talk to Take Notes. Nearly 1,000 students from China and ASEAN countries, including Brunei, Malaysia, Myanmar, the Philippines, Thailand, and Vietnam, asked various kinds of questions they are curious about. From whether astronauts can serve the internet in space, to what if they are sick, from how to become an astronaut, to what is the most impressive thing in space. A number of venues were set up for the talks between the participant students and the astronauts via video link, with the main venue set up in Beijing and the sub-venues in ASEAN countries, such as Brunei, Malaysia, Myanmar, the Philippines, Thailand, and Vietnam. Liu Yang, the female astronaut of the three member of Shenzhou 14 crew, shared her work experience in the space with the students. ASEAN youth says they get insightful inspiration from communication with Chinese astronauts. Many students from the Association of Southeast Asian Nations said talking to the Chinese astronauts in space station has inspired their scientific dreams. School teachers in the Philippines said the communication with Chinese astronauts has broadened the horizon for students. I am Janelle Asia A.D. Mayuga, student from grade 12. Nearly 1,000 students from China and ASEAN countries, including Brunei, Malaysia, Myanmar, the Philippines, Thailand, and Vietnam, attended the live class delivered from Chinese Space Station. The trio of astronauts answered various questions from the students and shared with the young people of their life and scientific work in the space station since early June, when the Saint Show 14 spaceship was successfully launched. The class took place in the main venue in Beijing and other sub venues in schools of ASEAN countries. Students say the special class has aroused their passion for space exploration. Australian Foreign Minister deeply concerned about situation in Myanmar. Foreign Minister Penny Wong said, Australia is considering imposing sanctions on Myanmar as the security and human rights situation there deteriorates. Are you going to maintain um, yeah, they remain, sanctions remain under active consideration. Uh, we uh, have continued to articulate um, our views, uh, our deep concerns as to the abrogation of human rights, uh, the deterioration, de deteriorating security and humanitarian situation. Australia will support efforts by the ASEAN to achieve peace in Myanmar. Australia was considering sanctions, but she did not elaborate on the nature of timing of such measures. Australia had imposed sanctions on some Myanmar generals in previous years, but unlike some Western countries, it has not added sanctions since the coup. Myanmar's ruling junta denies allegations of human rights violations and war crimes. ASEAN last week said it will continue to pressure Myanmar to implement a peace plan agreed last year, even though it acknowledged the junta's failure to make significant progress. Wong also rejected a Myanmar court ruling against Sean Thornell, an Australian economist and former advisor to Myanmar's deposed leader Aung San Suu Kyi. <laughs> Thornell was sentenced in Myanmar in September to three years in jail for violating a state secrets law. The case remains a top priority. Indonesia Human Rights says police use of tear gas for soccer stampede. The country's Human Rights Commission found in a report on the incident released Indonesian police firing tear gas was the main trigger for a deadly soccer stampede at the stadium in East Java last month. Commissioners from the human rights body said 135 people had died in the stampede, mostly from asphyxiation after the match at Kanjuruhan Stadium on October 1st. The report echoed similar conclusions made last month by a government fact-finding team, which found multiple factors like excessive use of tear gas, locked doors, an overcapacity stadium, and failure to properly implement safety procedures exacerbate the deadly crush. 
Indonesian authorities and Indonesian Football Association have faced questions and criticism in recent weeks over why police fired tear gas inside the stadium, a crowd control measure banned by World Soccer Governing Body, FIFA. Several stations in Hanoi closed, raising fears of fuel supply crisis. The closure of gas stations in Hanoi raised concerns about the fuel supply crunch spreading in Vietnam. Many stations have put out signs saying temporarily close or waiting for resupplying. I'm very concerned because I'm always on the road making a living. It also annoys me because I'm not feeling up to go out once a week like others, but twice a day. Motor taxi rider Nguyen Chi Bak said he had tried several fuel stations before finding one open. The Ministry of Industry and Trade, Nguyen Hong Dieng, said the country was not facing fuel shortages, seeking to calm fears after some petrol stations in southern cities cut or limited sales. The official Vietnam news agency reported that some fuel stations in the country's business hub of Ho Chi Minh City had closed or stopped selling gasoline while maintaining diesel sales. It was not clear how many gas stations overall had been affected across the country. The Trade Ministry did not immediately respond to a request for comment about the disruption. According to the official data, Vietnam's refined fuel imports in the first 10 months of 2022 rose 22.8% from a year earlier to 7.13 million tons, but cost rose 123.8% to $7.37 billion. Xi Jinping awards China's Friendship Medal to Vietnam's Communist Party chief. Chinese President Xi Jinping, also General Secretary of the Communist Party of China Central Committee, at the ceremony awarded the Friendship Medal of the People's Republic of China to General Secretary of the Communist Party of Vietnam Central Committee, Nguyen Phu Trong. The medal awarding ceremony was held at the Great Hall of the People in Beijing, where Xi and Trong both expressed their best wishes to the long-lasting friendship between the two countries and peoples. In response, Strong said he would like to express deep gratitude to the broadly CPC, to China and Chinese people for the profound friendship they have given to Vietnam and the Vietnamese people of all generations. He believed the lofty honor will be a very strong driving force for them to further consolidate and expand the relations between Vietnam and China. Chinese Vice Premier calls for enhancing cooperation with Singapore in various fields. Chinese Vice Premier Hang Sen visited Singapore upon invitation and co-chaired four meetings of bilateral cooperation mechanisms will continue to deepen cooperation and mutual learning with Singapore to promote the modernization causes of both countries. Han met with Singaporean President Halima Yaqub, Prime Minister Li Xiong Lung, Deputy Prime Minister Lawrence Wong, Deputy Prime Minister Heng Sui Kiet, and Senior Minister Teo Chi Han, respectively. Currently, China-Singapore relations maintain a sound momentum of development, which not only helps the development of the two countries, but also contributes to the development of the region and the world. Noting the 20th CPC National Congress has made, it clear that the rejuvenation of the Chinese nation and all fronts should be advanced through the Chinese path to modernization. Halima, Li, and other Singaporean leaders said that Singapore attaches great importance to developing relations with China and stands ready to keep close high-level interaction with China and strengthen practical cooperation in various fields so as to take bilateral relations to a new high. They also expressed their willingness to work with the Chinese side to safeguard the multilateral trading systems and rules, promote regional stability and openness, and promote sustainable development of the world. South Korea president visits memorial for Halloween crash victims. South Korea's President Yoon suk yeol paid his respects at an altar and makeshift memorial set up for victims of the Halloween crash in the capital Seoul. Yoon left a stalk of chrysanthemum flower at each location and posed to read the messages left by mourners near the narrow alleyway where a stampede happened in Itaewon district.
The death toll from the crash at the crowded Halloween street party climbed to 156, with 29 in serious condition. At least 26 citizens from 14 countries were among the dead. UNES called for a thorough investigation, and authorities said they were focused on reconstruction the lead up to the crash as well as looking at the weather anyone may have been responsible for triggering the crash. China urges peace and stability on the Korean Peninsula. China avoided commenting directly on the North Korean missile launches or potential sanctions, but said they hoped all parties could peacefully resolve issues through dialogue. North Korea fired multiple ballistic missiles, including a possible failed intercontinental ballistic missile that triggered an alert for residents in parts of central and northern Japan to seek shelter. The launches came after Pyongyang demanded the United States and South Korea stop large-scale military exercises, saying such military rashness and provocation can be no longer tolerated. Well, everyone, that's the entire news in today's episode. We will bring you another update information in the next episode. Stay safe, stay healthy, and see you.